I slept for a good while until I woke up facing the rest of my room, unable to move, and I immediately knew I was having sleep paralysis. <laughs> corner, there was a black figure that appeared to be walking toward me, but it was staying in the same spot while just acting like it was walking almost. So tomorrow night, I'm going to be hanging out with my friends, and we're going to go back to the place that it all started. So disclaimer, if you guys are into haunted stuff or things in that area, this video is most definitely going to be for you because this is a true story of something that's actually going on in my life currently and I, you'll see. So in my life, I have never really been associated with haunted things. I've never lived in a haunted house or been to many haunted places until my newest home. There'd be small things at night, like I'd be hearing voices while I'm laying in bed, like little children's voices or people laughing, or I'd wake up and hear like a loud crashing, banging noise, but nothing really that I thought too much of. I just always associated it to being down to something that was going on in the real world, nothing paranormal. But the absolute worst situation I've ever been through took place winter last year. So I went to basketball practice one day and I came home with my mom. When we got home, I don't remember how the conversation started, but we got to talking about our experiences growing up with ghosts and such, and she told me she never really experienced that sort of thing. This majestic vault is made out of carved stone, coral, and the concrete walls are two feet thick. And at the entrance, there's a huge blue slab of marble, making it very hard for anyone to break in. The first one to be laid to rest within this vault was Elizabeth, James Elliot's wife, who died in 1792. But a couple years later, James had to sell it, and the vault was purchased by another family. And when they went to remove Elizabeth's body, her and her coffin were just not there. So that night, it was still early, about 6 o'clock when I got up practice, so I went up to where I used to live to hang out with some of my friends for a while. It was our winter break, so we could stay out however long we felt like on any day we felt like. So the people I hang out with are really, really cool people. I love all of them. But one of them's into demons and, like, Ouija boards and shit like that, just like I am. And I don't know, that sort of thing just always kind of intrigued me. It was just always an interesting thing that there could be an afterlife and people that are still remaining on this earth after their death. So we all together went to our old elementary school and decided to do something something kind of questionable at nighttime. So I already have a brief history with Ghost. One of my closest friends passed away and her name was Hunter and I grieved like crazy about this because it hit me insanely hard. But then literally two days afterwards, on my back there was an H like carved into it. Don't believe me? Well, here you go. That was terrifying to me at the time and it sparked my interest in this sort of thing. So anyway, back to the story. So we decided to break out a ghost searching app, and I'd be lying to you if I told you I said something insanely spooky happened from that because nothing really out of the ordinary happened. Just the phone slightly picking up a few dots on the screen, but nothing out of the ordinary. So we decided like, yo, this is fun and all, but it's pitch black at the park at 11pm and there's not really much else to do, so let's just head out. So after that, we all decided to head our separate ways because we had a great night and there wasn't much else to do. And it was a really, really fun night. I remember it really distinctly because later on that night, Things took an awful, awful turn for me. I went home and played Xbox for a little while, but then I got tired and just decided to go to bed. I slept for a good while until I woke up facing the rest of my room, unable to move, and I immediately knew I was having sleep paralysis for the first time in my life. And I have absolutely never, ever experienced this, and let me tell you, it was awful. While sitting there seemingly lifeless, I was scanning the room because that's all I could really do, and in the corner there was a black figure that appeared to be walking toward me, but it was staying in the same spot while just acting like it was walking almost. And I kept hearing in my head, I'm scared, take me home. But it wasn't from me, it was another voice, almost like a kid's voice. Then I just remember waking up the next morning and researching this crap like absolutely nobody's business. And later on in life, I found a video from a YouTuber named Morgan Adams who experienced the exact same thing as me where she went to a place and came back and experienced sleep paralysis and ended up having a ghost with her. I could just feel her and I didn't know why it was like her name was Angie, it just was. I would have sleep paralysis like three times a week at least. And it was always the same dream of me in a cave with my hands tied behind my back and I couldn't move. And it was just this black figure with like her hair. Oh my God. And she would just oh tell me like all night, she's like, take me home, take me home. So to be completely honest, completely transparent with you guys, I had absolutely no freaking idea what I was gonna do to fix this or how I was gonna just resolve this issue that I had. I wouldn't call it an issue, just 
the situation that I had around me at the time. Ghosts and stuff, like while I'm very interested about them, they're not something that I really want in my life. But this one, it seemingly attached itself to me and I just didn't know what to do. And then every other night for I want to say about two weeks, I would have the same dream of a kid sitting like in a cave type area just saying that he was scared and needed to go home. One day I was with my friends and we ended up going back to the same park and I kind of went off by myself saying I was just using the bathroom and really I went off just to say out loud, you're home now, be free. Because I truthfully was under the impression that the ghost was following me and he was probably just sad, you know. Then I went back and I felt almost better. So really over time everything got a lot better until very recently, which is what's prompted me to even tell you guys this story in the first place. Recently I was chilling in my friend's hot tub, it was me and like four of our other friends, and then one of my friends decided to ask us if we had any ghost stories or ghost encounters, and I didn't really tell him everything that I had going on, I just said like, oh I'd hear banging at the middle of the night, or I hear little kids laughing in the middle of the night, and all these other things that I had experienced, but not the big thing that I've experienced. And then I went home that night, and literally for the first time, in months I had sleep paralysis and it was the same sleep paralysis I had the very first time that I encountered the ghost that seemingly attached himself to me but it didn't stop there it happened that night and the next night and the night after that and I'm not prone to sleep paralysis it's not something that I've had a history of it just started to happen all over again and it's the freakiest thing so for three days straight I experienced this terror so currently I'm freaked all the way out, but in a weird way, I feel kind of calm about things if that makes any sense. I know you should be horrified by events taking place like this, but I feel like the ghost isn't an evil spirit in like any way. I feel like he's just lost. And I wish I could tell you that there was some cute happy story to the ending of this, but uh, no. Nope. The events I just told you about with the three days of sleep paralysis, those were literally the last few days of my life. And as of right now, I'm in a situation of telling you the stories. Life's crazy. So yeah, that's where I'm at right now. I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to fix this issue or how I'm going to work it out or if I'm just going to have to live with it, but that's where I'm at right now. But I'm complete, I'm sure that things are going to end up working out in the long run, and if they don't, I'm moving out soon anyway, so I don't give a damn. But there is something that I'm going to do. So tomorrow night, I'm going to be hanging out with my friends, and we're going to go back to the place that it all started, the same park that I found this ghost at and he attached himself to me with. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna try to see if we can get him to just stay there or see if we can find anything out from the people that are around the area, just see what we can do to help him just be at peace and not be with me anymore. This is really freaky, I'm not super scared about it, it's just, it's a really weird situation and I just, I want this spirit to be at peace and not have to be with me anymore if that makes any sense. If you're wondering where the corner is that whenever I have sleep paralysis, it's the corner literally right behind me. That corner right there is where it all happens. So yeah, stay tuned, there's going to be another video coming up and we're going to try to get to the bottom of this. Places that I can't go